you also. And the reason I'm going to be singing a special is because Brother Garrett asked me to sing a special and I forgot Brother Glenn was coming so I agreed to and I do not. I swear to my own heart and change not. Amen. Then us, so Brother Glenn will be with us. Next week, our afternoon service, we want to move over to Rushville. Um, and we'll move over to Rushville for our afternoon service. That will be Brother Glenn uh, going away because he's moving to North Carolina to become a pastor of a church there in North Carolina. And uh, our friend, a good preacher, and therefore, so we pray for a brother, we'll be praying for Brother Glenn at that time. Then uh, also, then we got literature distribution starting, which will start on the 2nd. You will see that we have lots of literature back there. About 2,000 pieces of literature uh, are close to that back there, plus uh, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 pieces back there, plus another 1,000 pieces at the house, I think, something like that. So we've got literature to get out. We will start on the 2nd, we are, which is a Saturday. Pray about the weather. The stuff is in plastic bags, but you're not. True. Alright, so pray about the rain. It looks like it's supposed to be on and off raining on the second. I'm asking the Lord to move that and uh, let it maybe rain a little bit on the third. See what I'm getting at? I'm not saying don't let it rain. But don't let it rain on the, the day when we're trying to get distribute literature. And uh, y'all might want to distribute literature on the afternoon of the 3rd to a Sunday. That would be a good idea too. So then to ask the Lord not let it rain on the 3rd. Are you getting what I'm getting at? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? That's what they would say. I know, how to, I know the world's lingo how to say it now. Are you picking up with what I'm laying down? And uh, so... Be praying about that. We continue to pray for Brother Jerry. Uh, he's in a rehab, Community South Rehab. And then uh, then Ms. Sephora, who had surgery on October 24th. And also, I'd ask you to pray for uh, Nate Newman, who is having surgery this week, um, actually having a stem cell transplant this week. And so be praying for him. Then, uh, don't forget our missionaries. We know that there's many of need there. Then I gave, everybody has this list. List. Oh, here, you have a list. All right, I'm giving your stuff back to you. And it says exactly what, or not exactly, but close to what my um, text said yesterday. I hope you read the text. It got the names of the people on there that we got that we're planning on. Um, they'll not all be here at the same time, but they'll all plan on being here. And uh, so, and then I plan on preaching every one of them. So plan on staying late, getting up early, going on for God. Um, then uh, the music. But then I got pray the Lord helps the saints and pray that God brings in sinners. We want God to bring in sinners and we want them to help the saints. We want the saints to be here, but we want them to get some help. Right. And uh, But most of all, pray for the Spirit to settle in and show himself mighty as we listen to the scriptures preach and look unto the Savior as preeminent. Our theme this year is the person of grace. So all the preaching, maybe not all of it, but a lot of the preaching will be about getting our eyes on the cross. That should be all preaching should get our eyes on Christ. Right. But that is the theme for the meeting this year. And then pray for supplies, food, finances, and we need some faculties. What's that? That's what a dictionary is for. <laughs> hey, did you not read the, y'all did not read the, uh, the, uh, text yesterday. I thought y'all being tech savvy like y'all were, y'all would have went to your Google and Google, what are the factories? 
a factor is a person who is like a jack of all trades, a servant who will do anything, is can just take care of whatever you need taken care of. Just like y'all, if I ask you, brother, I need you to pass out this uh, when the people come in, or brother, I, I need you to do, can you can you check on the lights or whatever? We need people. What I'm saying is, we need servants. But I had to have an F word so I could go with food, finances, and factors. And uh, because you got to alliterate when you're illiterate. Amen. And uh, so, pray God to raise up some people that will help us. Um, many of them will be coming in. and But that we do need the service. We need the service. It's a big meeting. Um, it's bigger than we can handle. I mean, I look at the crowd, and we don't call them. <laughs> All right? So I look at the crew, and it's just barely enough to be a crew. Not, it's not a crowd, it's just barely big enough to be a crew. But uh, I look at us, and I say, how are we going to do this, Lord? How can we accomplish this? We don't have the finances, and I can look at everybody here, and I can say, we can't get the finances. Unless God does a miracle. And he did one the other day and sent us a little bit of money in that I could put toward a meeting. And uh, then, uh, so we can't handle this meeting. And two of my, your, I, the Lord's choice servants will not be participating much in the meeting. Hopefully, they can both come to the meeting. Uh, that is Brother Jerry and Miss Pat. And if you do how much they do, and I, I'm going to tell you this, if you have not said thank you to them lately, you ought to. Before, before the funerals, just say thank you to people. Let's show our gratefulness before it comes up. Oh, they were such a blessing. Oh, did you tell them that? Did you write them a card? Did you write them a text? Did you tell them how precious they are? Tell people. Let people know you're thankful for them. And uh, so, and uh, so, I'm expecting two things for from us, and that's for each of us to step up. And for God to answer prayer. Now that means one thing. If you pray. And you plan to do everything you can. And give what the Lord guides. God will do a miracle. There was a young lad with a lunch. You say. I don't know whether it was a lunch or what it was. But there was a young lad. Who had two fishes. And five months. And the Lord took those things because the lad gave those things. Right. If you don't give your things, your time, your talent, your treasure, then he can't take it. He's not a thief. He does not rob. That's right. He's not a robber. Which we'll be preaching on that in a little while. He thought about robbery. But uh, but if you give, he'll take and he'll use, and he'll make, he'll, he'll, he'll do a miracle, exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. But the first thing is, he gave. He looked to heaven and gave thanks. And bless the food. And guess what happened? God did a miracle. But if we won't give our lunch to the lad, or like the lad to the Lord, give our give our lunch to the Lord like the lad did, then we cannot expect God to 
and then you marry her. Somebody has to give their love to the Lord. Here's my basket. There's a song called that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can have it. My problem is my basket's empty. And uh, pretty much uh, not many of it, but I, that little lad didn't have much. But what he had, he gave. Amen. Brother Johnny prayed for the meeting. And then uh, thank the Lord for the service this morning. Brother Gary, get up and do a couple more songs. You got the special. And then sing your special. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you this, Lord, this morning, God, Lord. That, yes, God, Lord, just touch us, God, Lord. And yes, God, Lord, that just uh, this, uh, this time, God, Lord, and this service, God, Lord, and just touch us, God, Lord. And yes, God, Lord, just give us strength, God, Lord, in our bodies, God, Lord. And yes, God, Lord, just just touch each one of us, God, Lord. And yes, God, Lord, just touch the meeting, God, Lord, that we're getting ready to have, Lord. And yes, God, Lord, that you know, God, Lord, that just touch those preachers, God, Lord. And yes, God, Lord, it's on to come, God, Lord. To, yes, God, Lord, to let us learn something, God, Lord. That yes, God, Lord, from you, God, Lord, and just touch us, God, Lord. And let us go throughout this afternoon, God, Lord, the rest of this day, God, Lord. And I ask you this right now, in Jesus' mighty precious name, amen. Hey, mm -hmm. we're going to be on page 16 in the praise song book. Page 16, how great thou art.
306, just as I am. Hey! God, 
but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant who was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want us to key in today, to key in today on this star. Let this mind be in you was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Mm -hmm. We will look at the thought. He thought it not robbery. Amen. Lord, I pray you bless the reading of thy word. And I bless Brother Garrett as he sings. Yes. And help us as we present what you've given to us to your people, the sheep of your pasture. Amen. God never moves with a purpose or plan. Amen. When trying his servant and molding a man, give thanks to the Lord, though your testing seems long. In darkness he giveth a song. O oh, rejoice in the Lord, he may.
right there. And uh, and you can look at their Sunday school. And Brother Brewster is teaching Sunday school there in the auditorium class. And in his class, he has been teaching on dating. And uh, I recommend it, and, and it probably it is the premier book on David. I recommend it to him to look at Alan Redpath's book, The Making of the Man of God. I would recommend that to anybody who wants to be a man after God's own heart. And you will see in that book things of David's life. Some good things, some not so good as far as men who look at it. And you'll find that it's always the same. God uses things in our life to make us what he'd have us to be. And I think about that and you say, what does that have to do with your message this morning? Not a thing. It had more to do with the song this morning. Thank you, Brother Gary, for reminding us that God makes no mistake. That's right. right. And in such God has told us to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And when I think of this portion of scripture that we read a little while ago, I usually observe this part of the humiliation as Christ humbles himself to come become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. I reason on the thought, let this mind be in you, the mind of humility instead of the mind of humanity. For the mind of humanity, the natural mind, naturally rejects and repels, yea, even rebels against the idea of being a nothing because we believe tend to believe that we are a something. Come on. And the world says, build up your self-esteem. But God says, let us esteem others better than ourselves. That's right. What do you esteem yourself to be? A something? A somebody? That is not the mind of Christ. That's right. For he was in the form of God. And yet he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. His friends doubted him. His friends denied him. And one of his friends did that despicable deed of deceiving him. Our precious Savior is the perfect example of stepping down. For he came out of the ivory palaces into this world of woe, as the songwriter wrote. For he dwelt on a high and holy place with the high and holy potentate, for he is the high and holy, holy potentate. He is our only potentate. Right. He lived in the palace of the priestly prince of peace. Yep. This one who had a throne as God since forever and shall have it forever. Who rules with the right scepter is known to love righteousness and hate wickedness. Or as Hebrews would say, hate iniquity. Yep. Which is rebellious sins. He hates sin. But because he loves righteousness and lives righteously and leads righteously, the Bible says that God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. He was an anointed one 
and he was appointed as heir of all things. And yet, he stepped down from the heaven of heaven to become a man. And yea, in the scripture, he would say, I am a word and no man despise the people. You say, how low did he go? Consider yourself becoming a worm. And that is not even near how low he went to become a man when he was the majesty on high. It is interesting that this one, the one who is the son, is called God by God. For under the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. This one who became the son had been, before he became the son, the eternal word. In the form of God. Mm -hmm. He was the eternal word. And the Bible tells us. That this word was in the beginning. For in the beginning was the word. It does not say from the beginning. As if he had been created. Or at the beginning. As if he just showed up. That's right. Come on. But it says in the beginning. When the begin before the beginning of anything or before the beginning of everything started. He was there. Already there. The word who was with God from everlasting. The word which was not just with God but was God. I do not only declare with the scriptures that this word was in the beginning, but this same word that was in the beginning made the beginning. For all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's right. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Come on. This word transcends time. For by him was time made. Mm -hmm. For God tells us in the book of Genesis, let there be light. How did he do that? By word. That's what was spoken. That's right. Come on. By the word. Let there be light. And guess what there was? There was light. And then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. What is that talking about? Let them show us the times, the seasons, the days, the years. That light is what made time exist. Okay. And that light was the word that was with God. In the beginning. Was God. In the beginning. He was not just in the beginning. But my friend. He made the beginning. He made time. He made seasons. Days and years. He made. All things. And then this word. Was not just in the beginning. But the same eternal word. That made the beginning was the word that was manifested and in picture and in type from the beginning. You'll start in the Bible finding pictures and types of our Lord Jesus Christ. From cover to cover, your King James Bible, you'll find pictures and types of the Lord Jesus. For even he said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are thine, which testify of me. 
In Luke 24, verse 27, when Jesus was speaking to those two men on the Emmaus road, the road to Emmaus, it, the Bible tells us, and the beginning, and the beginning, at, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. From the beginning, in the first book of Moses, the book of Genesis, we find the word manifested in picture and in time. Just to mention one, we see the word as the light that shines out of darkness. For we said, let there be light, there was light. That light that shined out of darkness. And then we find that that light was seen in the physical manifestation of the sun, the greater light to rule the day. And you'll notice that that light was set between heaven and earth. If you were to look at the book of Genesis, you'll find that that light was set between heaven and earth. Not to give light to the heaven of heavens, for it was the land of light. Heaven is a land of light. For God is light. And in him is no darkness That's at all. Right. But the heaven. Which does not need light. But he came down. It was between the heaven. Uh, the heaven of heavens. And earth. In the firmament of heaven. To shine light. Upon the earth. The Bible tells us this in the book of Genesis. He was a light. The heaven, as I said, does not need light. Does not need more light. But the word was the mediator between God and man. Hanging between heaven and earth to be a light to a dark place and to deliver us from the power of darkness so that we no longer need to grope in darkness but can live in the light. God sent Christ a light to the world. Yeah. This is the Lord Jesus. The Word who was in the beginning, who was made, who made the beginning, and was manifested from the beginning. This eternal word became God's earthly son. Yea, and from that point on, he is the everlasting son. He has not ceased to be the son when he died, but he is seated as the son at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the everlasting son. But he morphed himself to be made flesh and dwell among us. That word form, being in a form of God. Now, I am not a Greek scholar, and I don't claim to be. But when it means he was formed, he was made up, he was in the form of God, it means he formed himself as God would be. That's right. He morphed himself. He did a metamorphosis, a miraculous metamorphosis. Amen. That he might be made flesh. And dwell among us. That we might see the brightness of God's glory. And the express image of his person. The word took the form and the person of the son. As God was manifest in the flesh. There is no controversy about this. For God declared it. The word was made in flesh. Without controversy. God is manifest in the flesh. I do not know why the world has a problem with that. God certainly doesn't. Come on. The world just does not want to face the fact that the Lamb of God is the Lord of glory. Amen. And from everlasting, in all eternity past, so we'd say, He was there before the world was. That's right. And he'll be around long after the world dies off. Amen. 
but he became the son. The God of glory spoke in these last days by his son, the word incarnate. With all the fullness of the Godhead dwelling within him. The man Christ Jesus. I ask why would he think that he robbed his rightful relationship with the Father? He thought it not robbed to be equal with God. That's right. Why? Because from everlasting, he has been God mm -hmm. as the eternal word. Come on. There is no time. That he was not God as the eternal word. And therefore there's no time he was not equal with God. Mm -hmm. Our precious Savior did not sneak in and steal God's glory. Nor did he break in and take God's good name. And for certain the dear Lamb of God. That holy thing which was born of a virgin and called the Son of God, did not high-handedly hold God by, and take by force God's glorious name or God's glorious position. He did not take anything from the Almighty, but He is the Almighty. Amen. He thought it not robbery to be people with God. Robbery in and of itself, by definition, is not just theft, but is theft by threat or by constraint. That means God would have had to see him and stand there and let him take his glory. But he did not take it. For it was given unto him. The glory that God said he would not give to another. Was given unto the one who is him. Has always been him. And always shall be him. That's right. Thought it not robbery. He was not as a thief or a burglar or as a robber. For they would not boast or brag of something that they couldn't get away with. Unless they're an idiot. Mm -hmm. And I met a couple of them. Come on, come on. And reading my Bible, I came at a couple of them. I met a couple of them who were who, who thought that they were gods or wanted to be like the most high. I'll set my throne in the heavens. I will be like the most high. But when God saw them boasting and bragging of what they were not, God caught them at this. God charged him for this. God convicted him for this. And they were brought to condemnation for this. For they were cast down from their position of prestige, their position of power. Guilty of a crime. A high crime. No misdemeanor. High crime. Christ was not like that. For he did not exalt himself, but he humbled himself. I do say there are those who have tried to steal the position of God. Mm -hmm. But those who have, those who are haughty and high-minded, have been cast down. For he tells us, he tells us, in the book of Isaiah, or in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. In Ezekiel, chapter 28. That say, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am a God. 
I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy, thine own understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver and thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, and therefore I will bring strangers upon thee and terrible of the nations and that they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy rightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. There shall thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. That is the Prince of Tyrus. But not only do I find the Prince of Tyrus, but in Isaiah 14, we will find the King of Babylon. Who said, I will be like the most high. He thought more highly of himself than he ought to think. And both of those men were brought down. Both of those men, which were pictures of that one, that one, that angel, that angel who was the anointed cherub, who was cast out and fell so fast that it was like lightning that he fell from heaven. But these two men were like that. But not our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh no, our Lord Jesus Christ was not like that. On the other hand, he did not boast of his sovereignty. He did not boast of his power and prestige, but he spoke of his sonship, a position of access to the sovereign one. He did not boast of being a somebody, but he boasted of being a son and took upon himself the form of a son. Yeah. The proud of this world sees on power but the one who humbled himself, though having all power at his disposal, he had the ability that he could have requested 12 legions of angels, and the Father shall presently give them unto him. And this man did not seize power, but submitted his power to the person of all power. That's the Lord Jesus. Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. He did not seize that sovereignty. But he submitted as a son. He does not brag of being God. <coughs> so that he can say look at me. Listen to me. No. He belittled himself to become a man. That he might say, look unto him who says, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. Who says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. He who was made much better than the angels, he is by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they, was also made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Why? So that he can take us who are all our lifetime subject to bondage because of fear of death and bring us to life in that more abundantly. Mm -hmm. He did not boast and brag of himself in the personhood of God, but he was the Emmanuel. God with us. He said, I've got relationship with the Father. I've got fellowship with the Father. For I and my Father are one. We have the same purpose. 
We have the same priorities. We have the same power. Because we are the same person. We are one. I and my father are one. Period. That is what's after that. Not just one in one area, but one in all essence. There is no way that him and his father are different, except for that him, in him, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's right. That's the only difference. When he was the eternal word, he was a spirit. But when we became an earthly man, he was a son. Come on. He's the Emmanuel. Yeah. That was promised by the prophet. Mm -hmm. The seed who had come to bruise the head of the serpent. Come on. He was not ashamed of his goodly heritage, but he humbled himself Good to become a godly man. Yeah. A godly human. Yeah. Not ashamed of his goodly heritage, but he humbled himself to be a godly human. That's right. Though he could say, I am my father of one, in every area of being, he did not use his power as God, but he always submitted himself to God. When he could have come down from that cross, he got grace to help in his time of need to stay on the cross. That's right. Come on. For God giveth more grace. He giveth grace to the humble. Yeah. Our Lord did not grasp to take the wonder of God from the Father. But he came to do the will of God the Father. He came to do the will of God, the work of God the Father. For the Bible tells us in John chapter 5, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, verse 16, and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not, not only broken the Sabbath, but he saith that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Wow. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. Or for what, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things whoever he doeth, these also do with the Son likewise. Mm -hmm. He did not come to take the wonder of God, but for doing the works of God and accomplishing the will of God. He was appointed and anointed the heir of all things, but he what came to be persecuted and to be punished. Why? Because it was the will of the Father. It was the will of the Father. That man might have a way to have access back to God. He came to do his, his not his will, but the Father. Let me give you a little account of something in my life. I remember a time when brother and, uh, that a man came to me and said if brother Bob retired I couldn't stay and sit under you as my pastor. I looked at him and I kind of scratched my head because I didn't know I was going to be the pastor and ultimately I did not even stick around to take that position if it would have been offered. But when he made that statement, I said, what, what did I do? 
He said, the reasoning was because I sent out flyers, because I made phone calls, and I reminded people to prepare for meetings and upcoming events. He said that I was too pushy, and that I, the announcements were made behind the pulpit, and they were uh, they were posted in the bulletin. That ought to be good enough. Now I kind of chuckle as my wife is now. I kind of chuckle. Why did I chuckle? Why did I laugh? Because I explained to him that the reason I do what I do is not because it's my will and not because it's my work. But it is what Brother Bob had asked me to do. It is the will of the pastor. I did not do my own will. I did not do my own work. Though I was an ordained gospel minister, though I had been in a ministry that I was preaching all around uh, the whole Southland, and yeah, even up north, I preached in New York. I have preached in, I preached, I, I mean, I preached lots of places. Even though I had a successful ministry and had been in, and had been ordained to gospel and had a successful ministry, when God told me that it was time for me to step down from that position and become my pastor's assistant, the associate pastor, and I said, "Jay," at that point in time, I gave up my right. And when my friends would call and ask me to come preach for them on a Sunday morning, there was multiple times I said I cannot because Brother Bob says he needs me there on Sunday mornings. I gave up my right. Not because I was not Brother Bob, Brother Van Dyke's equal. I had the same ordination certificate he had. Only mine had my names on it and the names of different people for the signatures. Right. But my ordination was in a gospel ministry just like his. You could look at them side by side and other than the, the things that signatures and the dates, other than those things you would find that they were the same. I was his equal. But because of God's choice for my life, I had become his servant. And in many ways, in many ways, like a son, he trained me, taught me, took me under his wing. I say all that to so get you to understand that my responsibility was not to do my own will, but the will of him that had sent me. My responsibility was to please him who had chosen me to be a soldier. A servant. That is how the Lord Jesus Christ is. With the Father in the beginning. As God in the beginning. Always God. And yet he humbled himself to submit himself to God. You said that means there's more than one God. As I said earlier, God said to the Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness and a scepter of thy kingdom. God called him God. How do you think it's robbery? Why would he have ever thought it was robbery? God did not think it was robbery for the Son to be God. To be equal with him. But the son humbled himself. More so than I did. When I stepped down to be brother Bob's assistant. His associate. For I had no, no near. No, nowhere near the experience the man of God had. I had no, nowhere near the mind that the man of God had. I had nowhere near the authority that the man of God had. In my previous post. 
But can I say, I could have held the same exact position that the man of God could. All I'm trying to get you to understand is that Jesus, who is, who existed with the Father from everlasting before time was, and created it before time was, uh, he was fully wise and, and as wonderful as the Father and the Holy Ghost, but he willfully chose a position of poverty and came out of the ivory palaces into this world of woe to show us the Father. For he that has seen the Father, or for he that has seen me, he says, has seen the Father. He came for us to show us the Father, to suffer in the work of the Father, to satisfy the will of the Father. For the Father saw the travail of his soul and was satisfied who being in the form of God he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the glory that he had with the Father before the world was. And made him to be both Lord and Christ. Where that every knee should bow. He was above every name. The name above every name. That every knee should bow of things in heaven. And things in earth. And things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'd ask you. Knowing who he is. Knowing what he did. Knowing these things. Where are you living? Are you living all out for him? For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Or are you living like those who exalt themselves to the place of God and are not submitted to God? For all seek their own. And not the things which are Jesus Christ. You are living one of those two places. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Or for all seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ. With all that he did as our example. Where are you? Where are you? Where am I? He is. He is God who is incarnate and now he ever lived. And he lives inside of you if you're a child of God. If you're a Christian today, he lives inside of you. The question is, do you live for his glory? Or for you, do you live for your own gain and your own glory? Jesus gave up his glory to glorify the Father. He said, restore unto me the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And that's exactly what the Father did. When he gave a name, which is above every name. When he became Lord and Christ. He was appointed <clears throat> and he was anointed. Heir. Of all things. I ask where are you today? Knowing where he was. Where he came to. That he might be. Who he is. Our father. I pray. That you might help our hearts. On the day. As we get our minds stayed upon. The taste of sweetness sits in front of all the Savior's plan. His head we pray in glory's crown is loose with grace for glory. His lips with grace 
Consider him 